So David, um, the, we're here to drive the new gravity, which we'll be doing tomorrow. But um, before we do that, um, you know, this, even though, you know, there's obviously a very, very much a, a family, visual family resemblance to the air, this is a pretty fundamentally new vehicle. You know, mm -hmm. my understanding is pretty much everything has changed on this mm -hmm. from the air. Yeah. So let's go through, you know, from, from your part of the car, from the dynamics, from the suspension, steering, and everything else that you can talk about. Why don't you walk me through what has changed for the gravity versus the air and, and why it changed? Yeah, sure. So when we did air, we kind of, uh, we looked at vehicles that are out there. You know, we looked at the BMW M5, especially the CS. Uh, we looked at the Porsche 911 for some steering characteristics. Uh, we looked at Porsche Taycan, we looked at various Mercedes, BMWs, um, and we kind of cherry-picked all the best attributes that we wanted and put them in, in one vehicle, which is the Lucid Air. When we came to do the Gravity, we did a similar thing. We drove a lot of Range Rovers, uh, Porsche Cayenne, Mercedes, uh, Benz EQS, and we said, okay, we can cherry-pick some things here, but also we kind of want to make our SUV version of the Lucid Air. And the, the evolution of, of lucid vehicles. So, although almost all the componentry is new and it's redesigned completely, there's a lot of air DNA in there. So, there's a lot of similarity in feel. Um, and if you like the air, we hope you'll like the, the Gravity SUV as well. So, we've, we've got some stuff on display over here. Why don't, mm -hmm. why don't we go over there yeah. and you can show me what sorts of things are new and, and what, what you've done. What's, you know, what, what are the most interesting things from your perspective? Yeah. Uh, that you've done with the, with the gravity. Definitely. So we start off with the powertrain. So this is our motor and inverter integrated together. So we call this a, a drive unit. Um, and this is, it's an evolution of what's in air. So similar idea, but it's the next step. You know, we've progressed our power and torque and efficiency and packaging and, and all those wonderful things. And that is housed inside our steel subframe. Um, and all of this is redesigned for gravity versus air. The, there are no shared components here. So we have a very stiff, very strong steel subframe. And then you see here the uh, rear steer actuators. So these come in our dynamic handling package, which is an optional extra. And we have these two, one on the left, one on the right. So this is the rear, the rear, the rear drive, drive unit yep. assembly. Exactly, exactly. So this is the rear right, this is the rear left. We have these two rear steer actuators, very similar to a Porsche 911 or a Ferrari F12. Um, and that allows us, it wins us a whole load of packaging volume here. And you think, okay, well, packaging volume isn't very sexy. But what it means is we don't have a big central actuator rear steer system. So you can have so much more interior space here. And as you'll see in a little bit when we'll look around the interior, uh, we have class leading, segment leading interior space. Then we see the air spring here. So air suspension is all new for Lucid in the gravity. Um, the air didn't have, didn't offer air suspension, it right? It was steel springs only. Yeah, yeah, correct. So in the rear, we have a separate air spring and then a separate damper. In the front, the damper is integrated inside the air spring. It's okay. a spring over damper. Uh, so these, uh, all gravities have air suspension. If you tick the box for the dynamic handling package, you get switchable volume, three different spring rate air suspension. And that allows us to hugely change the character of the car between our different drive modes. So you can get a huge breadth of character, you can get a very comfortable, plush, limousine-like SUV, or you can get a, get a very you know, controlled, agile, sporty SUV at the other end of the spectrum. Then we have our Bilstein semi-active adaptive dampers. Um, so these are very, very high-end. Uh, and give us fantastic ride quality, body control, handling, agility. We adjust these 500 times per second. And each damper has two solenoids, one for compression and one for rebound. Okay. So we can make huge adjustments to character and we respond according to what the road's doing, what the wheels are doing, what the vehicle body is doing, and what the driver is doing with the inputs as well, as well as which drive mode you're in. So they are a fantastic bit of kit. Uh, and that's standard on all gravity. Then we'll move on to the control arms next. So on Lucid Air, we have an integral link architecture. Mm -hmm. So very different linkage design. Um, that was not easy to fit air suspension into. We okay. wanted to add more height adjust. So we went for a five link here. 
which in itself is not novel. You know, people mm -hmm. do five links, uh, but we are very, very proud of this. It's all designed fully in-house. Um, so does this give you a little more wheel travel available? It gives us a lot more wheel travel than Air has. Uh -huh. I have to go and look up the exact numbers to remind myself. But uh, yeah, it's um, we can go from... I'm going to look up those numbers later on, so I don't miss okay. right now. But yeah, very good uh, range of height adjust. We can go from very low, either for easy entry, easy easy exit, or to be hunkered down and super efficient. We, we shrink our frontal area, shrink our uh, drag force on the freeway. Uh, we also lower uh, for more at, for more agility as well on a, on a twisty road, or you can raise up for ground clearance when you're off-roading. Mm -hmm. This is an SUV, people want to off-road as well, so we've made this thing capable. So this is all designed in-house. Uh, and then we have the brakes as well. So this being the rear, we have a 388 mil diameter uh, rotor in the rear. It's a good size rotor. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Especially considering it's a rear. Uh, this is a four piston uh, fixed caliper from Brembo. This one is uh, not painted because this is not from the dynamic handling package. But if you get the dynamic handling package, this is painted and has a Lucid logo on there as well. Uh, and then we have a separate spot caliper for the electric part brake as well. Okay. Uh, is, that, is that a dry caliper? Is it electrically actuated or is it? Uh, yeah, this is, this is electrically actuated, yeah. So this is your motor and gearbox here. Okay. And then uh, two pads inside there. Okay. Wet. So yeah, dry, wet. Okay. Yeah, so really, really uh, high-end brake system. Uh, and then you can see the front and front car out there as well. We have a 390mm uh, diameter front brake rotor uh, with a six piston fixed caliper, again from Brembo. Um, yeah, very, very high end kit. And that is driven by a Bosch iBooster Gen 2 and a Bosch ESP10, so the latest and greatest uh -huh. kit there, and a blend of Lucid and Bosch software and controls. Okay, so, uh, you know, presumably that um, things like the, the stability control is going to be coming out of the the ESP10 mm -hmm. system uh, for things like other drive assist systems. Uh, is that all developed in-house um, by Lucid and then um, integrated to uh, send the actuation signals or yep. the control signals to the, uh, the Bosch system? Yeah, the brakes yeah that, so that's a really interesting topic. Uh, so on, when we did air or drive, we launched in 2021. <clears throat> and we used uh, Bosch for ABS, traction control, stability control, various other functions as well in those families. And uh, when we then did Air Sapphire and Air Real Drive, we took on the motor traction control uh, responsibility. So our vehicle control unit, our centralized controller, and then the ECUs on the front and rear motors, in the case of Sapphire, the two rear motors, are running our in-house motor traction control, adjusting torque 1,000 times per second. So we can eliminate slip before the driver even perceives it, if we wish. Or you can turn that off and do the smoke. And that's, that's one of the beauties of, of an electric propulsion system, is you have a lot more bandwidth to do that. And, and you can do a lot finer control than you can do with an engine. So much so, yeah. yeah. A combustion engine, you might adjust 50 times per second. Mm -hmm. We can do 1,000 times per second on these drive units with our lucid traction control. So that was uh, Lucid motor traction control, and we still use Bosch brake traction control. So really good blend of, of, of Lucid and Bosch working together. When we came to Gravity, we said we want to take on brake traction control responsibility as well. So this is now Lucid motor traction control, Lucid brake traction control. And we can command four corner brake pressures to be whatever we want as well. So we can use that to emulate a limited slip differential. And it is eerily accurate it feels just like a limited slip so yeah great on road great off road great rock crawling you can lift a wheel in the air and it'll feel like almost like a locking diff um yeah so much capability so system. you're determining how much brake torque you need at each corner yeah. and then sending that command to the the bosch i booster exactly. too and then it just executes to that. the bosch esp10 yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah so yeah really really powerful system uh a, a great blend of lucid and bento controls yeah okay Right. Yeah. And then um, the uh, the the drive unit itself here, um, is, what what sorts of things have changed with this? I think, you know, you mentioned like you know a little more efficiency than before. Yeah. Yeah, it's a continued evolution. So we have the same drive unit called out over here. 
So if you look how small this is, uh -huh. um, you know, it'll fit in a carry-on suitcase. Right. That's always been one of the impressive things about uh, about the, the Lucid powertrain. Yeah. yeah, and only 79 kilos, and it's this small, but this alone can output 670 horsepower. Um, and it's, you know, that's, a, that's a lot of power density. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insane. Industry-leading efficiency as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a powertrain expert by any okay. means. We have our powertrain experts here, including right. Dr. Imad Lala, who's going to give a presentation shortly. Uh, yeah, and he'll be able to talk you through exactly what's changed inside here. Okay. Um, now, for the front suspension, uh, what uh, what's the layout of that? Is that also a, a multi-link setup? Is that a five-link? It, it is, yeah. So it's... Similar to air, but you know, redesigned different geometry because it's now a bigger vehicle, uh -huh. SUV, more height change. So it's what we call a uh, virtual double wishbone. So we have a double wishbone but split upper and a double wishbone but split lower as well. So we project the steer axis outboard. Um, yeah, all custom lucid geometry designed in house. Uh, we use a lot of simulation tools to get it right, and we do a lot of physical prototype iteration as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, similar to air, but it's it's an evolution. It's for the SUV, but there's a lot of air, lucid air flavor in that. Single steering actuator on the front end, on the front end. Yeah, okay. yeah. We have a steering gear from Bosch, uh -huh. who you know they're, they're the best in the industry. There's a reason Porsche uses them in, in all of their their products. Um, yeah, so Bosch steering system tuned by Lucid. Uh, we're pretty proud of that one. Okay, and um, you're not doing a, a steer by wire system on there though, right? Or is it currently no? Okay, you never never rule out for the future, but it's it's not uh, not here today. Okay, but that so that's that's a rack and pinion steering with the electric power assist. Yes, yeah. Okay. So it's a we should have put one on display actually. Um, yeah, it's rack and pinion, and it's what we call parallel axis belt drive as well. Mm -hmm. So you have the the main axis of the rack bar, ball joints on each end, and tie rods that go out to your mm -hmm. knuckle, and then you have your motor on a, an axis that's parallel to your rack bar. And you have a belt-driven uh, ball nut gear assembly linking the two, um, which is, you know, recognised as the highest end uh, steering gear architecture out there. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, really, really good system. Which All right. We'll get to try out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Good. All right. Any anything else uh, in terms of the driving dynamics that you want to highlight? You know that that uh, you know that you tried to achieve uh, with with gravity. Um, I think one thing that's worth calling out that you will, you'll experience tomorrow is what we do with rear steer. So most people who have rear steer, they will, you know, at low speed they steer out of phase. Uh -huh. So you steer one way with, uh, with the front, you steer the other way with the rear. And get tighter turning phase. circles. Exactly. And then they switch over at 20 something miles per hour to steer in phase um, to stabilize the vehicle. We do the same, but we've moved our transition speed from 20-something up to 50-something in our smooth drive mode and 60-something in our swift and sprint drive modes. Why such a high transition speed? We're using it to make the vehicle very, very agile. Okay. Um, so uh, a big thing for us was it has to feel natural. Mm -hmm. Always has to feel natural. There are some car companies out there on which it does not feel natural. I, I won't name them, but we tried everything out there, and some we love, some we really don't love. And we recognize Porsche as the best at doing rear steer integration and calibration. So uh, we've really gone after what they do, um, and I think we've, you know, I think we've got that. We're, we're really happy with it. Um, we do a lot of what we call agilization. So we're, we're, you know, we're changing both the virtual wheelbase of the car. We're making the car feel like a shorter wheelbase vehicle or a longer wheelbase vehicle when you're high speed on the It's an inter interesting uh, word there, agilization. Agilization yeah. or stabilization. Yeah. Um, and we also do some really cool things where we change the, uh, the kind of virtual inertia of the vehicle as well. So um, it's not just about a kind of quasi-static wheelbase effect. There's also an inertia and response effect as well. So yeah, really powerful system can change the character of the car completely and we do some fun stuff in our different drive modes so it's worth trying those out tomorrow on your drive all right well i, I will definitely try them out because I, often you know I mean, most manufacturers have different drive modes available on their yeah. vehicles and often when you switch from one drive mode to another there's not a huge amount of difference from one to the one to the next it's, hard, it's really hard to discern the the distinctions between the different modes yeah and so I'll, Given given what you've described, it sounds like you've, you've designed in enough bandwidth to actually allow for more variation 
between those modes. Yeah, so. yeah there's, there's some pretty big changes. So compared with Air, we have a lot more toys to play with here. Mm -hmm. It was crucial that we made sure it always feels organic and you know, everything should be working in harmony. Nothing should ever feel synthetic or artificial. So it's a very honest system still. And we're really proud of that. But when you go between your different drive modes on a vehicle that has a dynamic, dynamic handling pack, like you'll drive tomorrow, we can change spring rate hugely. We can go from very soft to very firm, or there's a middle setting as well. We can change what we do with active rear steer. We change our damping, uh, everything compression and rebound on, on all four corners. Uh, we change our steering calibration. We change our brake calibration. We change power and torque maps, uh, power and torque filters, and torque distribution around the vehicle as well. Um, so yeah, uh, there's more I'm, I'm not thinking of now, but real differences in character between the modes. Um, so uh, there was a question I was just gonna ask you. Uh, and now it has slipped out of my brain. Um, the, oh, shoot, what the hell was it now? No worries, please don't. Uh, there was something that you said that triggered a question in my mind, and as I was listening, I've, I've forgotten what it was now, but I'm sure I'll, I'll think of it again. Um, the, I guess, oh, uh, I know what it was. The, um, the control of all this, you know, I, I don't know if, how much you can talk about the electronic architecture, mm -hmm. um, but is all of this managed from one common domain controller that, that manages all of the chassis control, or is it distributed? How, how's that set up on, on this car? Yeah, it's a blend of centralized and, and distributed systems. So we have our vehicle control unit, um, which is owned by uh, our, well, the team under our VP of digital who's here to talk with you today, uh, Jean-Philippe Gautier. Um, and that has a whole load of intelligence all in one ECU. So it knows what's happening in every system on the vehicle and it can decide how to control each one so everything is always harmonious. We then have somewhat distributed systems as well, like you know our Bosch ESP10, our Bosch iBooster, our Bosch steering system. Um, so you still have some discrete ECUs for some of exactly, those exactly. bought-in systems. Yeah, yeah. So for us, you know, we, we want the control and we place the intelligence where it can benefit us. And in some areas where we recognize, you know, Bosch are the, the best in the world at making a steering system and, and potentially an ESP system. So let's lean on their expertise and their systems of intelligence and, and ability and integrate it into our system. And there's a hell of a lot of interplay with our, VC, with our VCU, our centralized controller. Um, but yeah, we, we kind of cherry pick the best from everything and, and blend it all together, integrate it all together. All right. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Pleasure to chat with you.